G'day there guys, thanks for tuning in for another episode today. Today I wanted to do a little test uh, just about, I'd recently bought the iPhone XS. Uh, I know I'm a little bit behind the times, but that's just kind of the way I work. I generally like to buy the iPhones once they've dropped about half uh, the price, because I just can't justify spending how much they are on a brand new iPhone. But I recently upgraded from the X. I know that's a huge upgrade, um, but because I'd heard that they had in the XS, they'd actually put in the uh, HDR function that they had in the photo, but into the video at 4K 30, 24, and in the uh, 1080 uh, frame rate. So I wanted to test this out, and in some of my searching about this feature, uh, as you get into in the deep, dark recesses of YouTube, I found out that people were suggesting that the iPhone XS had similar, if not better, dynamic range than a Sony full frame camera. So I had I have the A7 III uh, and I thought, hey, let's put this to the test quickly. So this is what you can see here. This is my front yard. Uh, this is shot in the on the Sony in HLG. Um, and yeah, I actually really like the way that this has come out. I'm using a, um, a LUT pack there from, uh, I'll put in the description, I don't remember who. Um, but yeah, it's rendering, I mean, it's very saturated. Um, but when we pull that down, uh, it actually comes out looking quite nice. And the, uh, the dynamic range here is pretty impressive. You can see the uh, differences between the blacks here that they've you know, just been managed to hold on to. And then uh, plenty of detail here in the sky. So uh, this is the A7 III and this is the iPhone. Now, the iPhone is very digital looking. Um, and you know, there's some ways of getting around that with using Filmic Pro and, uh, and other apps like that. Um, but the thing I'm just really impressed with here is the dynamic range. Look in here, uh, it's a little, it, you know, it's it's kind of muddy, okay, but look at the detail we have in the sky here and all the clouds and everything like that. Uh, and this is all done using uh, Apple software, uh, which is kind of crazy. So, I mean, the sensor inside a phone is literally four fifths of a fingernail size, uh, and it's being able to render this sort of dynamic range, which is really impressive. So next up, we've got a shot here of my car. Um, and this next shot isn't particularly amazing for the uh, iPhone XS, but you can see um, that it's giving a pretty comparable image. If you were to take the depth of field out of the equation, uh, and you know, you were to kind of go these side by side and maybe push this one a little, a, a little bit around a bit more to make it a little bit more, uh, I guess, you know, less digital and sharpened. Um, you know, they're pretty similar images there in terms of dynamic range. Um, so the next one we've got here is another one of the outside yard. Um, yeah, again, really like the, you know, it's a very saturated look, but I like the blues and the greens in this shot. Um, and so let's pay our attention to the dynamic range. That's what we're looking at here. Uh, and we've got pretty good dynamic range here. And we see again with the um, iPhone X, you know, a lot of other parts of this image are nowhere near as good as the uh, Sony A3, but the dynamic range definitely is, which is again, very crazy. Uh, the next two are the biggest differences that I can see in this. So this is the A7 III, look, pretty much shooting directly into the sun. Uh, we've got most of the details here. We're losing some stuff down here, uh, but we're definitely clipping and, uh, you know, you can see on the scopes here, we've maxed it out and it's not looking good, but we go to the iPhone, okay, and we are not really clipping anything. There's the tiniest little bit here, uh, which is kind of just up here, but down in the shadows, it's muddy. I know, that, but that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at the dynamic range. Um, and so you can see here that the iPhone XS has actually done a better job of capturing that highlight and uh, low light detail, or at least, uh, yeah, yeah the, the, the luminance values uh, than the Sony a7 III, which again is just crazy. Uh, and lastly, this one I think is the best indication of the difference in the dynamic range or the ability of the iPhone to sometimes trump the dynamic range of a full frame Sony camera. And that is this shot here. Now I've exposed this shot, didn't change the lights at all uh, between the two shots for outside. And you can see that that's nicely exposed. Whereas everything else that's too dark, it's not really usable for a scene unless you're looking for some sort of moody uh, vibe. Now, when we go to the iPhone, you can see that that's dramatically different. Now I'll, I'll, uh, I'll concede that outside is a little bit more blown out than uh, on this shot, but look at the difference in the uh, ambient. I don't know if I can use that word there, right? Uh, but the ambient light uh, or luminance of these two rooms compared to this one, it's, it's literally almost night and day where it feels like. And 
you know, this is what uh, I'm really excited about with the iPhone, that um, it's giving me a phone uh, that at 4K 30, 24 and uh, 1080 uh, gives me the dynamic range in my, you know, in the in the size of my palm, in my pocket, with me at all at at all times, um, that has a dynamic similar dynamic range to the A7 III. Now, obviously, there's heaps of other features of the images all through here that make the A7 III look better. We got depth of field and we got color rendition and uh, you know sharpness and all that sort of stuff. But dynamic range is one of those things that makes a person who doesn't really know much about an image go, wow, that's a really good looking image. Um, and it's so Apple's done really well with this. Um, and the thing I'm most excited for in the future is potentially companies like Sony and Panasonic um, and Canon using the software version. Because we all know that Apple's only doing this through software, they're not doing it through hardware. And so if we are able to actually uh, see that transferred onto a full frame camera with a sensor that's about 100 times bigger than the iPhone, I'm just very excited about what sort of dynamic range we can potentially get out of a full frame Sony camera. So thanks for tuning in today, guys. Let me know what you think of the results. If you uh, are impressed by the iPhone X, if you still think that phones are just rubbish and people are idiots forever shooting with them. Um, but yeah, uh, comment if you use the, if you have the XS and if you use it or anything higher, comment if you uh, shoot with the A7 III and you've got some great LUTs that you wanna share or comment if you think, uh, you know, <laughs> Uh, whatever you think about me, that's fine. Just came for you guys to comment and hear, hear from you about these sorts of ideas that I'm interested in pursuing on my own. So thanks for tuning in and I hope that you have a great day.